Hello, Boris Pravisham here. Today I'm on Space Engineers, a game I've become rather addicted to despite it not being anywhere near finished. However, what is finished allows for some great designs and some basic moving parts. Firstly, I should say that I'm not very good at engineering in general. I'm no expert, but have always loved it, and Space Engineers has forced me into learning the very basics. So, as I go along and understand everything bit by bit, I intend on creating a tutorial video to hopefully help absolute beginners, like me, to get into the game more quickly and create some more complex and interesting builds. If I have missed anything, got something wrong, or you have any questions, please let me know. This first video is about pistons and the cranks that drive them, what they are, how they can be created and modified, and some of the things they could be used for. Now, rotors enable spinning blocks, hopefully not as glitchy as this one, but they still do, and this creates angular motion. We want to turn this into linear motion that goes forwards and backwards instead of around. Now, to make a piston, we need four things. Three connected and moving arms, and a rail to guide the piston arm. Now, here's a rail I prepared earlier. The rail holds the piston arm in place. So the piston arm will be going up and down here. Now, this bottom row is not actually needed. You can have just empty space in there, but for the sake of this explanation, I've put it in there. The landing gear, however, are essential. They're the only block of the right size and strength. Now, I have just left one row between the two through there. You can make this as wide as you like, but I've just started with one. Also, for the size of the piston I'll be building today, I won't actually need all three rows of these landing gear, but it will help me explain how many landing gear I'll need, and I'll delete the ones I don't need. There are three arms that are required when building a piston. I will name them just simply the first, second, and third arms, and I will color them the same each time. The first arm will be yellow, the second arm will be red, and the third arm will be green. Now, the first arm, colored yellow, will be attached to the station or ship that you want to use it on. That there determines the travel distance of the piston. The more blocks that are here, the longer the piston will travel. Now, the travel distance will always be an odd number due to the fact that we can only work with whole numbers. For example, if you want a door that is 11 blocks high, the first arm needs to be 6 long, but you can't have a door that is 12 blocks high. I'll explain how that works later as well. The second arm, colored red, transfers the circular movement from the first arm to the linear movement of the third arm. It needs to be long enough to allow this to happen, however, if it's not long enough, then too much pressure on the rails could cause them to break. The third arm is the piston itself. It's colored green. This moves things in a straight line. It will go up and down through that corridor. And as I said, the distance that it travels is directly related to the first arm. Together, these three arms form a crank. The crank is a mechanism that is often used to drive a piston. Uh, for example, it's used in cars every day. When you're working out your own pistons, you will need to follow this order. A. What distance do you want your piston to travel? B. You then use this to calculate the length of the first arm. And then you use the length of the first arm to calculate the minimum distance of this second arm. Now we'll work out how to calculate each of these and where to put everything in relation to this. For the sake of the explanation, we'll start with three blocks on the first arm. Now, forget about that rail for a second. I'm going to show you over here how to determine the minimum length that the second arm needs to be. So first we'll put down the first arm, which is going to be three long. Before, I stacked the arms on top of each other like that, but that wastes space. You might as well put them like that where you can. However, always remember that the rotor counts as a block. So one, two, three. To work out the minimum length of the second arm, we need to build the crank at its most compact stage of the rotation, when the piston is pulled all the way back in. So that means that the second arm will be facing backwards like this. Also to save space, rather than have the third arm on top of the second arm like that, we could put it down here 
and a long, let me just get it, here as such. However, like this, if you build this arm too close over in here, when it spins around, of course it's got a save there, when it spins around, it will smash into this. Now you may think, well, I could just make a very short second arm and put the rotor up here instead and then have the third arm on top of that. Well, if you do that, then the second arm will be too short and you'll end up breaking this rail. So the minimum applies in either case. Now, as you can see, we can't build there, but we can build there. So if we reduce the size of this, I just broke it. Let me fix that. It's a very unforgiving game, isn't it? We can now see that because we, can, we can't build there, but we can build one back from it. So if we put that there, then we can put the third arm down here. So that gives us the minimum length of the second arm. We can see it's one, two, three, four, five. So we can see that the second arm is two blocks longer than the first arm, and that applies to any crank. So to find the minimum length of the second arm, no matter how long the first arm is, you take the length of the first arm and add two. So y equals x plus two, where y is the length of the second arm and x is the length of the first, for those who want some basic algebra. Now, remember that that is a minimum length. It is not the only length. You can make that second arm as long as you want. In fact, a longer arm can be more efficient and safer to a point. A longer arm can allow you to run a piston faster while not applying quite as much pressure to the rails on the sides. However, the longer you get, the more up and down movement you will have as well. And unfortunately, I haven't learned how to counter that yet. If you have any suggestions, let me know. However, just remember that it is the first arm length plus two, and that will give you the minimum for the second arm. Now that we have that, we can work out where we should place all of this in relation to the rail. To do that, we need to work backwards. So first, we need to work out where the third arm should go. And I have worked out through experience that normally the furthest back you want to go is two from that midpoint there. So one, two, and then the one up there. If you go back any further, then the sideways movement that's imparted pushes the piston off to the side and then it can get jammed facing that way instead of that way. However, the safest spot is right in the middle, but that means you need a longer second arm to reach it. If you're in a ship that is flying, especially fast turning, and you want the piston to work at the same time, then make sure it's in further than hanging out there to counter any extra inertia caused by the ship. However, here on a station at a normal speed, having it back here works perfectly well. Remember, I'm showing you the minimum you need here. You can build from this later. So next, we go up a block. Now this will be where the rotor is. I'll just mark it in white for the moment. That rotor is connected to the second arm, which we have worked out will be five blocks long, including that rotor. So we need to add four to that. This is the point that the first arm connects to the second arm via another rotor, which we will mark with white. And then, as we did before, we're copying that We've got to go back that way because this is where the rotor is closed. And then we go back three, including that. So this point right here, which we'll mark with a yellow spot, is where the rotor, the first rotor that connects to the station, needs to go. So I'll place this rotor, which goes in there, and delete the rest. And as I go along, fill it in with what we know. So as you can see, 
we've built three on the first arm, five on the second arm, which then connects to the piston arm, and I will just fill in the rest of this with the piston arm. Now, it doesn't need to be that long. That arm can be as long as you need it to be. If you have a longer second arm, that will leave more space in between here, because this section, the first arm, will be back over here somewhere. If that's the case, then you can actually fit more blocks in that go backwards. You can do this to counteract any weight that you might have placed on the other end. Normally, though, it's not needed, and it might actually get in the road, and of course here we can't even fit it. Now it is ready to be used, so I'll turn on the rotor. It'll work with both a negative and positive velocity. Now I'll keep it steady and start it with around about one. Actually, I'll speed that up a little bit. Now you can see the third piston arm, the green one, going up and down in a straight line. Now you could set the boundaries of the first rotor's angles to make it go all the way out and then stop and then you could reverse the velocity to make it go all the way back and stop. That's useful for a piston door, for example. So now we have to work out how far it is traveling, how far that piston is traveling to work out how long to build the first arm in the first place. So to work that out we have to pay attention only to this. So if we mark on the floor where it's at its lowest point, which we know because we set it, which is here, we'll color the floor there, and then measure how far out it goes, we can see the distance that it travels. So we can see that lines up with that, and then it will run all the way back, and it will line up with that. So we can now count that, which is five, so we know that it has a travel distance of 5. This means that the furthest this piston can push or pull something is 5 blocks, regardless of how long this arm is. So we can see this piston has a first arm of 3 and it travels 5 blocks. To work out the formula so we can calculate any length, we need to find some more examples, which I have built around the side of this blast shield. If you're wondering why I put this up, it's because one of my experiments I did here exploded and went everywhere and destroyed all the stuff over here, and I had to rebuild it. So the moral of that is to experiment away from the things you don't want destroyed. So I've got some two more basic ones here, one with a length of five on the first arm, and there's another one over there with the length of six. And I've counted out the same way as before the traveling distance of the piston. So you can see it lines up with that, and then it will extend all the way out to there. So we can count that, and we see that it's nine. So the first arm, with a length of five blocks, travels nine. And if we move over to the one with six, on the first arm, we can see that it travels 11. If you haven't worked it out, it's fairly simple. The travel distance is two times the first arm length minus one. So in formula terms, y equals 2x minus one, where y is the traveling distance and x is the length of the first arm. This isn't that useful in the real world, though. We want to know how long the first arm needs to be if we know how far we want the pistons to go. So we rearrange the formula and it turns out x equals y plus 1 all over 2. Again, y is the distance you want the piston to travel and x is the length of the first arm. So in English, say you have a big door that is 15 blocks high, you add 1 to it, which is 16, and then you halve it 8. So the first arm would need to be 8 blocks long. See why we can't do even numbers? Because halving an odd number would leave us with half a block, which we don't have in this game. I'll go through all of this again with a recap at the end of the video. To me, this is very simple maths, but I understand if some people see an X and a Y next to a number and their eyes will just glaze over. So I'll first show you some other examples quickly, though. You can always pause it if you want to look at something longer. So on this one, the one that we looked at before that had a first arm with a length of six, shows that the floor isn't necessary. In some cases, it might even get in the road. 
I haven't worked out an effective way to encase it from both the bottom and the top, which would be nice to stop it from wobbling up and down. I'm sure someone has. So as I said before, if uh, anybody knows how to do this, then you could even post it in the Steam Workshop and post the link below. This one here shows that pistons and cranks can come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Here is one that comes off the ceiling, if that's what you need. It's always the same principle, though. This one is a bit bigger. It's seven long. I've encased it so you can see the boundaries of it and how much space you'd need for this particular design. You can see that when you start getting a bit bigger, they're not for a small area and you might need to work with something else. So work out the length first. This one is ridiculously big. The first arm is 21 blocks long, so it has a 41 block travel distance. Obviously, you probably won't need this one big very often, if at all but it just shows you that the principle does scale up. You can also stack them, having multiple pistons on top of each other, running from the same rotor, joined, in this case, by the second arm. You can see that they're completely in sync. Now this could go on forever, as high as you want. Or if the situation allows it a more efficient way of doing it is by joining the third arms together, the piston arms, the green ones. So you can stack them like this as high or as wide as you want and they'll all run in sync. All through the one rotor which you can control easily. One of the most common uses for a piston is as a sliding door. So imagine this is the side of a station or a ship or something. To make a door, you have to set the maximum and minimum angles for the rotors. Thankfully, it's quite easy with a crank, because if you put your rotors down in the right direction, then 0 degrees should be all the way closed, and 180 degrees should be all the way open, or vice versa. On this one, I have reduced it by a few degrees on either side to ensure it doesn't come into contact with any blocks, but instead comes to a rest up against them. You can change this depending on your particular setup. Now to close and open the door you set the velocity either plus or minus depending on where it's at currently. At the moment it is open so that means that positive velocity makes it open so if I want to close it I change it to a negative velocity and we go back and we see that the door is slowly closing. And of course, if you want it to go back the other way, you just change the velocity back to a positive. So let's have a look at how this one works. It's exactly the same design as before. So as this spins around, this pulls the third arm, the piston arm, back in. And I have extended it, so normally it's just long there. But I've added an extension down the bottom, so the whole thing slides in and out. Over here is another quick design. Neither of these are perfect but they work alright as examples. This one is smaller and perhaps a little more compact depending on your situation. I haven't set the, uh, the limits, the angles on this one so it's just going up and down. So to see how this one works it's exactly the same principle it always is. It's a the, the, the first arm is two blocks long, one, two, which of course means that the distance that the piston travels is three, so that's just going up and down there. So, to sum everything up, when building a piston there are eight steps. Firstly, you must decide how many blocks you want the piston to travel, and it must be an odd number. Secondly, you calculate the length of the first arm by adding 1 to the travelling distance and then halving the result. Thirdly, you calculate the minimum length of the second arm by adding 2 to the length of the first arm and then ensuring that the length of the second arm that you build is either equal or longer than this. 
and before you place down the railing using enough to at least cover the travel distance you can then adjust it later on next you decide where the piston should start when it is closed at its lowest point next this becomes where the third arm starts then you work backwards from this point you count back how many blocks you have for your second arm then you count forward how many blocks you have for your first arm and then lastly you place your first rotor here then build the piston as shown To end this video I will just look at this for anybody that wants to have a good close look at it. Uh, thank you for watching, hopefully this helps someone. As I said at the start, if I got anything wrong, if there is anything I should have added or if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and goodbye.